So we're going to be taking a look at the use callback hook in this video. It's good for when you want to prevent a function from being created on every single render. Now I'm going to explain what I mean by that and how this is helpful when we want to use the memo function in React. Now for those of you that have been following along with the React hooks series, I went ahead and I pared down the code because it was getting a little cluttered. So here I have a single div and a hello component that I'm rendering. And in hello, we just have a div that says hello. So we're going to be starting from this place. And we're going to start off by uh, passing a function down to our hello component here. So I'm going to create some state. And we're going to start with just a simple counter. So I'm going to say count and set count. And we're going to use the use state hook. So now, normally if I wanted to say pass a function down to hello, for example, an increment function, I might do it like this. So I'm going to create a lambda here, and I'm going to say set count, count plus one. Now you'll notice, because I've created a lambda here, this is what I meant by creating a function on every single render. Every time app is rendered, this is going to be recreated, this function right here. So, and I also want to say, for example, display the count maybe in this component. So I'm going to say count is that. And then in my hello component, I want to use this increment function some way. So I'm going to say button. And we're going to say increment. And every time they click the hello button, we want to increment. So we'll give that a save. And then let's take a look at the code here. So now if I say hello and I press it, we're just incrementing. So nothing special is happening so far. Um, but the key thing to note is that this function is being created on every single render. So usually that's not a problem. With the current code we have, not a problem whatsoever. But what does cause a problem is when we want to use something like React Memo. So when I say react.memo on this component, um, I want this component to only re-render when increment changes. But the problem is increments changing all the time. Um, and so we can we can actually see this happening whenever I add uh, some some logic here to, to print out whenever this component re-renders, which we can do, which we saw in a previous video. Here we can say renders is equal to use ref, which starts at zero. Use ref. And we can console log renders and renders plus plus. So now we can see, and this should be renders.current. And if we want to, we could stick this in its own custom hook since we may want to use this uh, several times. So we use uh, count renders. So I'm going to say export const use count renders. And I'm going to paste this code here. And now we can put this, we can keep the logic in this hook. So now all I have to say is use count renders. And now we're going to get a console log every time this hook is rendered. Or every time that component is rendered. So we can see a hello, and now we can see that each time I increment count, this is increasing. Right? Uh, which we can actually improve this because this function is not changing at all, right? The function I want to do the same thing on every single time. The only thing that's changing is this count variable here. Um, so how can we prevent this? This is where use callback comes in. So I can say use callback, and it's probably good for me to explain this memo if you've never seen this before. What memo does is basically it just compares the props, and if the props have changed, um, then it's going to re-render the component. So by default, React will always re-render the component uh, if the parent is changed. If the parent's rendering, this guy will render as well. But when we add memo, it's going to check only re-render when the props are changed. So we're going to see the difference in that once we use the use callback. So I'm going to say increment is equal to use callback. And how use callback works is we pass in a function and then its dependencies in this little bracket array right here. So here I'm going to pass in set count. And now if I pass in the two dependencies, they are count and set count. And now I can pass this in here. So how use callback works is whenever the count or set count changes, this function will be recreated and put in this variable basically. So now 
increments only changing when these two values are either of those are changed. So we haven't quite fixed it yet um, because if I come over here, we can see it's still rendering every count. And the reason for that is because we're depending on count right now. So we can eliminate this dependency by using the updater function that is available to us when we call set count here. We can do it like this. So now what we have is if we come over here, I increment the count here. You'll notice the function is never changing. And so this uh, never gets uh, re-rendered. And so this is where use callback shines is we, when we want to prevent functions from basically changing the value. And a lot of times the reason why you want to prevent that from happening is when you're using react.memo because it's going to check the reference of something. The other case where you may want to use use callback is in a case where you're using, for example, like use effect and you have some logic and you need to depend on this increment function. So you don't want this function to be changing all the time or else the use effect will keep firing off. So those are like the two places where you'll tend to use these the most. Um, the other thing to note is we can add uh, parameters to this if we want. So for example, I can pass in n, and so that'll be the first parameter to increment. So we can increment by an n amount. So in my hello function over here, I can go ahead and say increment by five, for example. And so that is going to be passed in to our use callback function. All right, so now we increment by five. The other thing you can do is you can actually return values from this, or you, you know you could return the. I guess we could we can't really return the new count because we're doing an updater function here, but you could return some value. Um, but usually when you're using use callback, you're not really needing to return something. So I don't think I've ever needed to return something. Um, but uh, note that's available to you in cases where you need to. So the last thing that I kind of want to go over is a more practical example of where this comes up. I found this comes up the most when I want to do a looping over an array of something. So let's say we want to, I'm just going to create a favorite nums array, which is going to be 7, 21, and 37 is going to be our favorite numbers for today. So let's say I want to loop, loop over these numbers here. So I'm going to say favorite nums dot map. And we're going to say n. And here we're going to return. And here I'm going to create a square class component. Actually, no, it's not going to be a class component. It's going to be a regular component. And I'm just going to copy our hello example. All right, so we're going to render the square component here. And let's say, for example, when I click on the square, I want to increment it by the favorite number. So I may do it like on click, I want to increment by n. Right, so this is a situation where, again, I'm creating a lambda. Usually not that big of a deal, but if I wanted to, for example, memoize the square, then things get messed up. So it really just comes up when you want to memoize things or you want that function to not always, you know, where it it matters when this is getting changed on every single render. When that matters, that's when you kind of want to use use callback. So we're going to start, we're going to use our use count renders. And uh, let's just comment it out from our app over here or from hello because we don't want to get too much stuff on our output. So in square over here, I'm going to display the favorite number, which is going to be n. And we're also going to display n here. And let's say we have an on click. So we, I kind of showed this method with the hello example, but we can see this again. And we're going to pass n down here. All right, so let's see what this just looks like. We also need a key. So now if I increment by these numbers, it's going to increment the count. You'll notice it's rendering each one of those every single time I click on a number for that many times. Now, if we're doing a square here and we have on click, that may be the standard way we want to do it. Um, but this case is we're creating a function on every render, and so it's causing it to render. So the approach that I usually take in these situations is I'll pass the increment down. 
and let's say we do increment and then we don't have the on click logic right here we put the on click logic inside of the square so here I have on click and instead of that we're gonna say increment now and then we're gonna say increment and we can pass in in there so now if we come over here you'll notice it's not gonna re-render every single time now because we're just not creating this function every render now so this is kind of approach that has come up a lot for me whenever I'm mapping over an array of items I'll usually pass down the function pass down the data and then inside of that function if I'm memoizing it I'll then have the logic for example the on click logic here where I call increment like this because we need this information there uh, so there you go that gives you an introduction into how use callback works and how when you would want to use it